Hello and welcome to another Zozin session. How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen, huh? Today is Saturday and that means today, according to the schedule, we're supposed to be doing game development. But yesterday we started a pretty interesting topic. Uh, we started a topic on memory management in C and uh, we implemented our own malloc and free implementation. You can actually find the previous episode uh, on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, yeah, so the source code of this implementation is going to be available in the description as usual. Uh, and uh, the yeah, here it is. Finally, I made a good enough video for YouTube algorithm to actually recommend me uh, recommend me back. It 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 happens quite rarely, <laughs> but uh, sometimes it does in fact happen. So uh, so let's put it like <laughs> the fuck is this face? Sus. This is my sus face. Uh, all right. So previous episode, uh, something like this. Uh, malloc and free. So, uh, and uh, one of the things I wanted to do with malloc and free uh, implementation is implement a garbage collector on top of um, on top of them. So the idea is going to be the following, right? So you have a heap. Right, so where's the heap? Here's the heap, right, of a particular capacity. And all of the uh, allocations and deallocations happen within that specific heap, right? Uh, and I had the following idea. What, like, since we know all of the chunks of the heap that are allocated and the, uh, also chunks that are deallocated, we can go through each individual allocated chunk and try to find within the allocated chunks something that resembles the pointer, right? And uh, see what this pointer's point. And if it points to something within the heap, and especially something that is allocated on the heap, we can mark the um, pointed chunks as um, reachable. And by going through this, the, the entire heap, we can determine which allocated chunks are reachable and unreachable and automatically deallocate them. So that was my idea. Uh, but, but unfortunately, yesterday, I just didn't have enough time to implement that idea. So um, I decided to do the second uh, episode of this um, memory management series uh, and finally implement that garbage collector. So, uh, but before we go and start implementing the garbage collector, I would like to talk a little bit about memory alignment because I think memory alignment will make, like, a, um, you know, handling properly memory alignment will make our life a little bit easier on that part. So, um, <clears throat> uh, let's actually recap how I planned to uh, implement, uh, you know, garbage collection step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm opening my paint, so it usually takes a little bit of time because it's written in very fast programming language called Python. Uh, everybody knows that it's super fast, so that's why you have to wait a little bit. So here's the heap, right? So here is your heap. And essentially, I wanted to sort of allocate uh, a window of eight bytes, right? The reason why I have a window of eight bytes because it's the size of the pointer on my specific machine. I have x86, 64 uh, machine, and usually uh, the size of the pointer is eight bytes. Right, so I have this window and um, right here is eight bytes. And then I look at this eight bytes and see if it's a pointer that points to something within uh, the heap. And then I shift uh, that window by one byte and try to see if this is a pointer and I have this like sort of rolling uh, rolling window but um, after a little bit of research and uh, you know remembering uh, previous pull requests by Gia I realized that this is not how computers work <laughs> This is not how computers work at all. So what I discovered is that programmers uh, live in this sort of like illusion that the memory is basically an array of uh, eight bit chunks, right? And each eight bit chunks is called bytes, right? So you have these bytes, uh, right? And addresses of these bytes are zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, this is not four. What the fuck is this for? four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, and each byte is eight bits, right? Eight bits. Um, this is not how computers works, seriously. 
Um, so for majority of like modern CPUs, it is way easier to actually not access a singular byte within the memory, but rather a whole word uh, like this. So essentially, if you want to read, um, for example, third byte, right, third byte of these like eight bits, um, the CPU reads the entire sort of word, right, and then it shifts everything uh, to the right and strips off everything that you don't want to like see. And because of that, for example, if you have a number, uh, number at the edge between the words, right, at the edge between the words, so um, nine... 10 and so on and so forth right so imagine that you have um 64 bit numbers so that means uh half of the number is located here and another half is located here so what computer needs to do is essentially do do two reads first it need to read uh, read this byte and then read that byte and basically assemble your number out of these two chunks Right, so, and this is incredibly, incredibly inefficient. Um, on the x86, uh, x86 64 CPUs, I think it's going to work fine, but there are some CPUs where this may straight up generate uh, an exception, right? So it may not work at all. Uh, because of that, in C, uh, in a C programming language, as far as I know, uh, there is all like the whole system of like padding structures and alignment and stuff like that, which sort of like helps you to prevent uh, these kind of situations and make sure that everything is aligned properly. So uh, let's take a look at some examples. <laughs> so let's take a look at some examples. Uh, I'm going to create something like full C and. Um, Let's create some stuff in here. So um, I remember quite often when I implement my allocators, Gia automatically <laughs> submits a pull request fixing my allocators and uh, making them um, making them like take into account the memory alignment. Uh, and thank you so much because uh, I don't really know much about memory alignment and I really appreciate her pull request. It's it's actually uh, amazing. So essentially, um, in BM in our virtual machine, we have it basically implemented to align to the size of the pointer, right? And uh, this should be sufficient on most of the platforms. So I'm going to actually go off of this assumption as well. All right, and uh, we'll have to rewrite our allocator to take that into account. Anyway, uh, so let's take a look at some of this stuff. So imagine that we allocated a heap, all right, in a static memory. So we have uh, a heap uh, a particular heap capacity. So how much do we want to have? 640 kilobytes, right? So here is the heap capacity and here it is. And let's actually try to print uh, the pointer to the heap and see what's going to happen, right? Uh, and see what's going to happen. I'm going to return zero in here. There we go. So I also want to recompile this entire thing. Uh, full, full C and something like this. There we go. So this is the pointer uh, that points to the beginning of the uh, of the heap, uh, of our heap. It's not like the heap of libc or anything like that. It's our heap. Uh, and what's interesting is that it, it's always different, right? So it's always different. It's always placed in the memory like in a different place. Uh, here's an interesting property of this uh, heap. Uh, it is always divisible by the size of the pointer, right? It is always divisible by the size of the pointer. So if I take the size of the pointer and like do mod on the heap, uh, let's see what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, this one is interesting. So this is pointer, right? So I think I need to convert it to size T, right? So it's actually converted to size T and uh, let's interpret it as uh, size. And there we go. Uh, it is always zero. So it is always different, right? The address of that heap is always different, uh, but it's always zero. I don't know who guarantees that the heap is gonna, be, this particular thing is gonna be aligned. Uh, probably, maybe kernel, right? Um, right, because it's probably located in one of the segments of elf file, 
right? And then the operating system probably parses the L file and puts the segments in the memory. Or maybe it's like also libc involved into that. I don't know. But uh, we're going to assume that heap is guaranteed to be like uh, aligned according to the size of the word. So the heap is always going to start either here or here or in another place that is divisible by eight, right? So, um, okay. And here is another interesting uh, example. Let's try to allocate a structure, or de define a structure rather. Right, and in uh, the structure, we're gonna define two fields. The first field is gonna be a character, right? Uh, and another field is gonna be a pointer, right? So if you take a look at the sizes of these types, right? Uh, size of character, right? It's gonna be something like, uh, ZU and uh, size of character and size of void star, right? Mm -hmm. um, I forgot to put a new line in here. Uh, there we go. So this is going to be the end. Right. So the size of the character is one byte and the size of the pointer is eight bytes. So if you uh, create a structure um, that combines both of them, you should get a structure of the size of, of the size nine. Right? I suppose. Probably. I don't know. Uh, let's actually find out. Uh, size of uh, foo should be equal to zero. Let's actually also align everything. Uh, yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Size of foo. There we go. Uh, and let's try just try to run it. And it's 16. Why is it 16? It's really interesting, right? So, 16. One of them is one byte, the second one is eight bytes, but both of them are 16. That is really sus, isn't it? Right, 16 is eight bytes and another eight bytes. That's really strange. Okay, so let's actually see uh, how it may look in the memory, right? So. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so this is one thing. And uh, so this is the second, second chunk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is another one. Uh, right, so I also want to number them somehow. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, uh, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right, so this is the size of the entire uh, structure in the memory. So we know for a fact that the pointer, that the pointer uh, like is 8 bytes. So the pointer must be located somewhere here, right? The pointer must be located somewhere here. Uh, so this is taken by the entire pointer. So that means X is located somewhere uh, here. So this is X. And everything else is in fact empty bytes and it's called padding. So it's padded like that. Maybe X is actually located somewhere here. I think it may depend on endianness of the machine, but yeah, it's, it's somewhere there. So essentially the reason is uh, that way, you, if you want to read X, you just need to make one read. If you need to read pointer, you just need to make one, uh, one read as well. If you pack them together, so the pointer uh, goes right after the X, the pointer may end up at the edges of these two words, and to read pointer, the machine would need to make two reads instead of one. Makes sense. At least this is how I understand it. I might do wrong. I'm not a level low level developer. I'm just a Java pleb, but uh, this is how I understand it. So if you smash them together, right, uh, you would have a problem. The CPU will have a problem of reading it properly because now it needs to assemble it out of two pieces. But if you put, uh, like put them like in, in different words, it suddenly becomes a little bit easier. So what's interesting is that if I add yet another character in here, uh, the size of the structure didn't change. It just didn't change. I can add another character in here. It doesn't change. So essentially what's happening in here is that I think, 
I think yet again, I'm not 100% sure I'm not a C developer like at all. I'm just a Java pleb. Uh, I think it just appends those things in here because it doesn't uh, increase the amount of reads you need to do to actually read individual things in here. So if you need to read X, you can just read the word and shift. And if you need to, uh, to read Y, you need to read the same word and shift. So basically, every time you need to read any of these fields, you just read the whole thing and just extract the thing that you want to read from there. Right? You don't have to do two reads or anything like that. So that means, theoretically, if you have more than eight characters in here, it will overflow and uh, make the size of the structure 16 plus 8, 24. Right? So something like that. We can even try to uh, try to you know test that. So you have three characters in here, and the size of the structure is is fine. So if I have eight uh, of them, it is still sixteen. As soon as I put nine in here, it suddenly blows up and becomes twenty-four. You see? So my theory was correct, right? So essentially, it just stores those characters in 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 that word. So, and as soon as it overflow, like this extra character needs to be put into a separate word, so the pointers still can stay in the same word. You know what that means? If the C compiler tries to help us and align everything so it all starts like from the, uh, from the edges of the words, all of your pointers are always going to be aligned uh, by 8 bytes, right? If you take the entire memory, and instead of scanning it uh, by each individual byte, you scan it by groups of eight bytes, you will always hit a point. Uh, unless you actually sort of compress, uh, like pack your structure. If you don't pack the structures, if you don't do any of the like low level shenanigans, you can just take your memory and scan it as uh, like groups of eights. And each groups of eight with a high probability might be a point. Uh, so that means I don't really need to scan with the rolling window if I have alignment in mind. So that also sort of limits the garbage collector that we can make, right? What if you want to uh, store pointers like packed in a structure? But our, um, uh, as I already mentioned in the previous video, which you can watch in the description, um, our garbage collector is already very limited. Like it's, if you somehow obscure the pointers, right? If you do something like Zor linked list, uh, it already won't work regardless of alignment or not alignment. So there's so, uh, so much things we can do with this kind of system. So I guess yet another limitation of the system is fine and I do not plan to use it in production anyway it's just like purely for educational and recreational purposes because I've never implemented anything like that before and I'm already learning things I'm already learning things I already learned about alignment uh, right before the stream so by the way there is a cool article about like memory alignment uh, by IBM uh, C memory alignment uh, IBM Right, scenery alignment, IBM. Data alignment straighten up and fly right. So yeah, as I was researching this kind of stuff, uh, I actually stumbled upon this article and it's, it's actually quite good. It's actually quite good. So I'm gonna put it in the description just for you because, because I love you. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, just a second. Data alignment straighten up and fly right. Uh, and... Eh, 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 eh. And uh, probably I want to put that in the in the chat as well, just in case anyone is interested in this kind of stuff. All right. So uh, what else do we get? Um, <clears throat> um, uh, yeah. And because of that, by the way, uh, we can assume that all of the structures are padded and aligned accordingly. Uh, we probably want to update our heap allocator. We probably want to update our heap allocator uh, to be something slightly different. Uh, to be something slightly different. Just a second. Uh, where is full? Yeah. So before we were using like an uh, array of characters, but what if we use like straight up array of pointers, right? So and the capacity is going to be something like size over pointer divided by the capacity. Right. And on top of that, we also need to make sure uh, it's going to be static assert. Right. And I also need to make sure that, um, well, I mean, it's it's the other way around. Right. It's the other way around. It's going to be 
is something like this. Uh, we also need to make sure that these two things actually divisible by each other, right? So that this thing is equal to zero. Uh, right, but um, you know, semantically it kind of looks weird because semantically pointer is supposed to be like a pointer to the memory. I think, again, semantically it would be better to use something like uint, uh, uint uh, ptrt. So it's a special type which is unsigned integer, but it has a size that is capable of holding a pointer. Right. So, and that's precisely what we, what we want. We want to actually work with the heap as an uh, array of chunks big enough that uh, they're capable of holding a pointer, or rather the, their size is exactly equal to the pointer. So semantically, a more correct uh, way of handling this kind of stuff would be, in my opinion, uh, using uint ptrt. So our heap now is array not of bytes, but these chunks. Right, but these chunks. So, and now let's take a look at the interesting example. So I'm gonna take a, a foo, um, actually I'm gonna take a heap and I'm gonna reinterpret it as a pointer to foo, right? I'm gonna reinterpret it as a pointer to foo and uh, I'm gonna just assign it like somewhere here. There we go. So now we're reinterpreting the heap as foo. So if I take uh, x and um, Actually, I can do the following thing. I can iterate starting from zero up until size of full x. Uh, I think I want to call it axis, right? I think I want to call it axis. And I'm going to be just setting um, full axis i equal i plus one, right? So basically, I'm going to initialize uh, this array of bytes with growing numbers. And the pointer, let's actually assign the pointer, I don't know, to something that we can see instantly to itself, right? Um, okay, and now I'm gonna just print the values of the uh, of the heap, right? We'll just print the values of the heap. Um, mm -mm. So the first one is gonna be uh, let's print them as pointer uh, heap zero, but we're gonna reinterpret it as a pointer, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then heap one. Right. So basically, I'm setting the heap reinterpreting it as fields of the structure and then I'm trying to access the heap as the array of these slots, of these big slots. And let's see what's going to happen. Uh, so if I try to run this entire thing, it does not work because I think I need to uh, import something like std int, right? And I also need to import assert. Mm. Yeah, uh, there we go. So as you can see, the first element of the heap is very small and it's equal to 0, 2, 0, 1, precisely the, the numbers that we initialized this first thing with, which even further confirms our, our theory that the bytes are located in this specific word. And the second value does resemble something like a pointer. We might as well actually print the pointer first, uh, just to confirm that that is it, in fact. So it's going to be full PTR. Uh, there we go. And as you can see, it's the same pointer, right? Because of the alignment, because the, of the constant alignment, uh, the pointers will fall into these cells. Right. So basically, you can just iterate through the cells of the heap and be with a certain percent of certainty sure that it is a pointer. Because if you're allocating structures, the structures are going to be padded and aligned and so on and so forth, unless you try to do something that is not alignable and not padded, but uh, then we can put that into commutation of the garbage collector and so on and so forth. You know what I'm talking about? So, and I think before we go into implementing uh, our garbage collector um, and stuff like that, I want to refactor my heap uh, to be actually array of the words rather than array of bytes because it will simplify, you know, scanning the heap and searching for the pointers. You know what I mean? Um, okay, this is one thing. Uh, but we also need to think about garbage collector roots. So if you never heard what is garbage collector roots, it's a, basically a term in garbage collection. Uh, garbage, uh, garbage collection roots, right. So basically it's the root expressions from which you start basically traversing the rest of the expressions they're referring to and uh, then seeing what's reachable and what's unreachable. And based on that, you essentially um, 
collect uh, unreachable pieces of uh, pieces of memory. So in our case, as already mentioned in the previous video, the uh, garbage collector routes are going to be the stack. So we'll need to somehow obtain the pointer to the stack, iterate through the stack, and uh, try to find pointers that point into the heap. Right. And I have no idea if stack is actually aligned uh, you know, accordingly. Maybe it is, maybe it is not, and this is something that we'll also have to explore uh, explore today. So, yeah, that's basically the plan for today. Hope it will go well, uh, and let's just start implementing things, and uh, yeah, essentially, before I start, I want to make a small break, so just a second. All right, so let's apply the knowledge that we gained uh, to the actual code in here, right? So let's go somewhere here. Again, you can find the source code in the uh, in the description, right? So I really like this macro, by the way. It's kind of convenient, uh, right? So essentially, when you call the heap collect, right? When you call the heap collect, uh, and it will hit this thing, it will automatically fail and tell you that this thing is not implemented, which is quite convenient in my opinion. Uh, so it's going to be something like heap, and yeah, there we go, unimplemented. So, and it's a, it's a very simple macro. I don't know why I didn't come up with, my, with that macro earlier, like I had all of the knowledge to implement it, uh, but yeah, um, sometimes it is, it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Um, okay, so I think we need to include something like uh, std, uh, std int, right, so it's going to be std int. Uh, and now the heap, right? Speaking of the heap, heap um, is going to be u u int ptr uh, ptrt, uh, right? And I think I want to actually like put it somewhere like here a little bit, so it's a little bit closer to chunks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, of course I want to check static uh, assert. Right? I want to statically assert. Uh, that this entire thing is in fact divisible by uh, uint ptr and it's equal to zero. All right, um, <clears throat> the um, heap capacity is not di divisible by the size of the pointer, by the size of the pointer uh, of the platform or something like that so we're gonna also try to explain the situation a little bit we're gonna also try to explain the situation uh so uh that was supposed to trigger a bunch of uh compilation errors so let's actually go ahead and follow the compilation errors and see what's gonna happen okay so it didn't even generate that many compilation errors i'm extremely disappointed actually <laughs> the fuck uh all right so even if i like i enabled all of the warnings and i also enabled extra warnings and well maybe it would make sense to actually also turn them into errors so it never even tries to do that yeah, yeah, yeah. so here we're converting heap to like you int pointer to character and it's well with all of the warnings enabled it's still fine so yeah, you int ptrt, right? And if I just change this chunk like this, uh, it is going to be totally fine. Not it, it is not really totally fine. Mm, expects void star, but the pointer, okay, that's actually very interesting. Mm, so, and if we're going to be storing the size of the chunk, yeah, okay, so this is how our uh, garbage collector works, by the way. Well, I mean, allocator. Uh, allocator. Uh, so essentially, we keep track of the list of uh, allocated and freed chunks, right? Allocated and freed chunks. So at the beginning, you have a free chunk that is the entire heap, and then you allocate something, uh, right? And now you have one allocated chunk and one free chunk. Then you allocate a, a little bit more, you have another allocated chunk, uh, and so on and so forth. Right, uh, and we, we keep track of them in separate lists. Uh, and then if you deallocate this entire thing, this uh, place becomes free. And at some point, uh, if uh, the allocation comes in that can fit in here, we can fit here as well, and so on and so forth. Basically, we, we think in terms of these like chunks. But the sizes of the chunks were measured in bytes. 
And I suppose if we're trying to keep everything aligned, we have to measure them in uh, words or whatever that's supposed to mean, right? Maybe in pointers. I, I like to call them words, right? So... Yeah, because if if the machine is 64 bits, 64 bits means it's the size of the word. So that means maybe it is correct to call these things words, right? So um, I think so, yeah. Choose by the way. So now we have to be super careful with this kind of shit. Um, we have to be super careful. Uh, so here is the chunk. It starts from a particular word and it has size amount of words. So we also have chunk list and chunk lists are essentially for um, for the you know arrays of chunks. So we have two chunk lists, the allocated chunks and free chunks. And we have different operations, right? Uh, so I, th I suppose nothing here needs to be changed. Uh, so we have insertion, uh, we have merge, which basically takes the uh, list of chunks. And if there's, there are consequent chunks uh, that can be merged, it merges them uh, and collects them into a separate list. So, yeah, we also have a debug information. Um, we also have a function that finds a particular pointer. So maybe this thing should accept you in PTR t like pointer to you in ptrt because that's what we're trying to find in here it returns the index also it removes a particular index and here we have uh, allocated chunks and free chunks and as you can see initially uh, in the list of free chunks we only have one chunk of the size of the entire heap right and we also have temporary chunks for for merging and stuff like that okay this is where uh, we're starting to have problems, right? Heap alloc expects the size in bytes, right? So this is a size in bytes, but we, we can only allocate uh, words, right? So one of the things we'll have to do, we'll have to convert bytes, size, of, size in bytes into the size in words, right? Uh, so I already modified this uh, variable, so that means this entire thing will not compile. Uh, when I'm trying to free, I'm accepting void pointer, uh, which is fine. So heap collect is not implemented. So we also have a bunch of pointers. Uh, we store them just to fragment the heap and see how it's fragmented and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so far so good. So if I try to compile this entire thing, uh, I think it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna start doing that. Okay, so let me actually cast this entire thing into the void pointer, right? So it's gonna be size bytes and there we go. Um, <clears throat> so I'm thinking uh, what, where I wanna convert size in bytes into size in words. Maybe I want to uh, convert it as soon as possible, somewhere here. So it's going to be size t, uh, right, const size, size words. And how can you convert the size in bytes into the size in words, right? So let's imagine that the size of your word is uh, 3 or, what, uh, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, where is my thing? Where is my 3? Okay. So, and this is how many, oh my God, uh, this is how many bytes you have, right? One, two, three, four, uh, one, two, yeah. right. So if you basically divide the amount of bytes by the size of the word, uh, you're going to end up with two, right? So because you have this whole part, another whole a whole chunk and this is going to be a remainder so it's going to be cut off by the integer division so what you need to do you need to do the following operations so you have seven of these things and you need to add uh, can i actually grab this color you need to add the size of the word basically three minus one in that case, uh, you're going to actually sort of top it off until it sort of aligns or overflows and only then try to divide it by the size of the word, right? So that's basically what you need to do. So, and because the size of the word is actually a power of two, right? In our case, it's actually eight, right? It's going to be uh, eight or something. Uh, maybe you can simplify this kind of stuff. You, you can do that maybe with bit operations and whatnot. 
but but for now I'm not gonna go into beat operations because they hurt my brain. So <laughs> for now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take size of bytes, add size of um, uint ptrt minus one, and then I'm gonna divide this entire thing by uh, this entire stuff. So this is how many words I wanna uh, allocate, right? Uh, and basically, if the amount of bytes is not divisible by words, we sort of like align everything appropriately in here. So, and now here, uh, what we can do, we can replace size with size words, right? So this is gonna be size words. Uh, so this is no other thing. So this is a size of the chunk, uh, size words, um, tail size, mm -hmm. uh, size words, size words. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, I think that should work fine now, hopefully. Hopefully that should work fine. And nothing else requires any modifications, hopefully. Uh, so let me try to do this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that. This is actually very cool. So yeah, the, the sizes of the chunks are one, 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 two, two. But the allocations that we make uh, are zero, one, two, three, up until n, and n is equal to ten. So we can actually try to print the uh, the allocations. Um, yeah, we, we can actually put them somewhere here. Um, so heap alloc uh, alloc uh, right size in bytes. Uh, right, 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 right. So these are the allocations we are making: zero, one, two, three, four, five, and uh, as you can see, it allocated four uh, chunks of one, but then the sizes went to two. I wonder why. Actually, this is interesting because I would expect. Mm, Ah, I know why. Because we're deallocating some of these things, okay? <laughs> we're, I, I was also deallocating some of these things to uh, to frag fragment the heap and see how, how it actually is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now we have uh, up until like eight chunks of size uh, one because uh, to, to actually get two chunks, you need to nine and 10 and further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so now now it works more or less uh, great. And this is how, so this is the size in, uh, yeah, in words. All right, that's actually pretty cool. I, I think it works. Uh, I think I'm gonna claim that this entire thing works. All righty. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, do, 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 do. I'm actually super happy how, how well it works. So, how easy it was to actually implement this kind of stuff. So, it's going to be heap alloc. Alloc. Uh, heap alloc. Uh, two, 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 two. And let's actually do committee committee. Mm -hmm, I suppose. So, I'm going to remove this entire thing. And uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hopefully, everything is aligned now. I, one of the things I want to try now, I want to try to generate like a binary tree um, that uses pointers to point to its uh, like uh, subtrees and stuff like that and just scan the heap uh, and see if you can find the pointers of all of the all of the nodes and stuff like that. So that would be actually kind of cool. That would be actually kind of cool. I want to I wanna try to do that. Uh, anyway, so and make the heap uh, aligned. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to push that uh, right into the repo. All right, let's make a small break. Um, all right, so uh, let's implement uh, something interesting. Let's implement something interesting. So as already mentioned, I want to have like some sort of like a binary tree. Uh, so where are we gonna put all of that? I don't know. I feel like I wanna like separate my implementation of the of, of our nation of, of the heap uh, like to a different translation unit because uh, this file is gonna grow pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, but then where I'm gonna define all of the static variables? I, I can define all of them in uh, in a static memory in a separate unit. So let's actually quickly separate all of that. Uh, it's gonna be heap, and if not defined, heap h, right? Then we're gonna define this entire thing, and that's gonna be end if. 
Uh, all right, and what we're going to happen here? Um, do I want to keep the capacity public? I don't think so. I, I think uh, the heap uh, thing you should not be public whatsoever, right? So because of that, I'm going to create a separate heap.c uh, and I'm going to just include uh, heap.h. There we go. Uh, and let's actually move this entire stuff in here and this thing is going to be completely static, right? So it's not going to be visible to the user. Uh, user should not even know about this kind of stuff. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You, you know th what? I think the only public things here are going to be heap alloc and heap free and also heap uh, collect, right? Right. So this is going to be something like that. So heap alloc, heap free and, and so on and so forth. So here is uh, what you're trying to allocate, right? It's uh, you're tr trying to allocate this amount of bytes. Then you can free this pointer, right? There we go. And uh, also we're going to have uh, heap collect. Everything else is going to be completely private. Uh, you're not supposed to even know how this magical box works. It's a magic, you know, how programming it's like to uh, explain um, technologies these days. You're not supposed to understand that it's magic. Just use our open source technology. It's going to solve you all of your problems. Yeah, that's precisely what it is. Yeah. Don't try to understand that. Try to pro uh, keep programming in uh, managed languages. Your program is slow. Don't try to understand that. It's magic. Trust us. Trust us. Um, all right. So uh, let, me, let me now grab this entire stuff and move all of that to... Uh, to the C file, I suppose. Uh, let's just move this stuff to the C file uh, and see how it works. Ah, funny, funny. Uh, okay, so it's gonna be something like that. Uh, heap.c, heap.c. Ah, okay, so we have a lot of shit in here, but I'm not sure if this entire shit uh, is worth it. Mm -hmm. So the chunk, chunk list, chunk insert, uh, all of that should be probably static. Uh, all of these things should be static. Uh, static, static. Um, mm -hmm. So these are the things we have to define after we defined their uh, their structures and of course they should not be visible outside of the translation unit so we're gonna keep them in here right we're gonna keep them in here uh, so this is gonna be static 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 this is public thing this is another public st thing and this is another public thing good 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 so how are we gonna build all of that uh, I'm thinking I'm just thinking so I, I don't want to do like a separate compilation uh, I think I'm gonna just compile everything at once like this uh, and maybe we're gonna say that this entire thing just depends on all of the files, C files and header files, and it also tries to compile everything at once. All right, so uh, it's, it will simplify, um, you know, the work a little bit, hopefully. So this one's gonna be heap. Uh, and let's just try to recompile, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, oh, this is because we're trying to inspect. <laughs> okay, hiding too much was a bad idea. Right, because I'm trying to inspect some of these like chunks and whatnot. So, um, you know, we need to introduce some sort of like a heap uh, debug, right? Which essentially, um, you know, prints this entire thing. Um, to be fair, why am I hiding all of that? Why am I hiding all of that? Let's let's just not hide anything. Um, I don't know. Like I got into this like OP mindset all of a sudden, where I'm trying to hide as many things as possible and ext uh, like uh, sort of expose an interface or something like that. I don't know why I got into this mindset. Sometimes it happens. Maybe because of the uh, tea, tea backed tea, right? So this is why I should not drink tea backed tea and just switch to back to lose leaf one right <laughs> because this kind of team uh, to, uh, like basically puts me into OOP mood for some reason all right so uh let's quickly try to expose all of these things um mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, so this is gonna be that and um but what's interesting about this thing is that i think 
uh, we have to mark it as extern, right? Yeah, yeah, we have to mark it as extern now. Uh, this thing doesn't have to be like that, and this is not static anymore. Uh, this entire stuff goes after the heap, right? This entire stuff goes after the heap. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And let's just put it like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and these chunks, these chunks go after we define them. Uh, none of them, I think, should be initialized, right? Uh, let's not initialize them and let's put it like that. And this one is going to be extern, right? This one is going to be extern. Uh, all right, so this thing is not static anymore. Well, and all, all of those things are not static anymore. Yeah, these are global variables. These are global variables. I know that your CS uh, professor said that it's bad, uh, but uh, I am a random person from the internet allow you to use global variables. Yes, you have my permission to use global variables. Using global variables is fine, trust me. It is totally fine. Uh, you're not gonna die from using global variables. Don't believe your CS professor. Don't believe him. They're lying to you. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. They're totally lying to you. They will try to convince you to not use uh, global variables with like bullshit terms like uh, coupling and stuff like that. Don't don't listen to them. Uh, none of these words mean anything. Trust me. Uh, I'm a random person from the internet. Uh, so, okay, uh, we exposed all of this stuff and let me now recompile this entire thing. Um, so, expected numeric... Ah, I see. So, now if I go to here, uh, yeah, I need to actually include uh, assert. I don't really, I'm not really sure why it doesn't work the way I expect it to work. Oh yeah, it, it has to be also std int, right? It has to be std int, and uh, also we need something like std leap, right? std leap, <laughs> bleep, <laughs> uh, std leap. Anything else? Print f std io. But in this case, we can just include that as uh, like this, right? And there we go. Everything is working, and we have <laughs> we have all of that in separate files. Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn amazing. My God. Absolutely amazing. Uh, all right, so let me see uh, what we can commit in here. Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, extract heap implementation into a separate, separate translation unit. There we go. And I'm going to push that right into the repo, mate. Mm -hmm. Cheers, by the way. Um, okay, so now um, all of this implementation is stuck under a separate translation unit and I can focus on implementing uh, some application. As I already said, I want to implement like uh, some sort of a binary tree, right? So I think we, you need to sort of forward declare the types of binary trees in C. And I don't know, I'm not a C programmer, like I don't know, I don't really know C that much. So uh, I think you have to do it like that, right? So, and we're going to store some data in the node and I'm going to store it in like in a format as I demonstrated at the beginning of the stream. So we're going to have a value that is a single byte and then we're going to have a couple of pointers, a couple of pointers to the left subtree and the right subtree, right? And of course, they shouldn't be void pointers. They should be not pointers, but they're pointers nonetheless. And because of that, the size of the structure, according to my calculations, should be 3 multiplied by 8, 24, right? In the first word, it's going to contain x. In the second word, it's going to be left. And in the third word, it's going to be right. And because of that, uh, the pointers are going to fit perfectly into the words, which in will enable us uh, to see them in the array of heap, right? So we'll be able to see all of them, right? Uh, so how would we generate uh, a binary tree? How would we even generate? Well, we need some sort of a function that's that is called generate uh, tree, right? Um, it will definitely return the node, right? It will definitely return the node, and it's going to be it's going to use our allocator uh, to allocate all of the nodes. So it probably needs. Um, needs to keep track of the current level, right? So it needs to keep track of the current level. Um, and what is it going to store? Um, 
in these things. I don't even know. Um, it may store something like a level plus ASCII code of A, so we can store like ASCII characters in there for some reason. But yeah, it's, it's not supposed to be useful. It's supposed to just generate something, I suppose. All right, so, and we also probably have some sort of like a max level, uh, size T max level, right? So you have the current level and you have a max level. Uh, right. So maybe I'm gonna call it uh, level current and level max. And if level current is less than level max, right, we're gonna, we're gonna keep generating this stuff. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna be returning just null. There we go. We're gonna be returning just null. Okay, so now what I need to do, I need to allocate the node, right? I need to allocate the node. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, uh, calling it root, and I, what I do, heap alloc size of dereferenced root right uh, and uh, what I'm gonna put in here I think I'm gonna just put X equal level current plus a and what's interesting is that I making a very uh, important assumption in here I make an assumption that level cur is not gonna be greater right yeah it's not gonna be a greater than if you if you subtract a uh, it's not gonna be a greater than z so it could be actually equal than z right so otherwise you're gonna have garbage somewhere there okay so let's actually generate left subtree uh, so it's gonna be generate tree uh, and we we'll just take uh, and increment the current level but pass in the max level in here max max <laughs> and then we're gonna have right uh, there we go uh, so that way we just you know generating tree or like layer by layer recursively um, and all of that of course uses our heap allocator and stuff like that so um, I don't know uh, maybe on top of that we, what we want to do we want to also print that tree just to see it if it got generated correctly uh, print tree and we're gonna accept node and root right um we also want to keep track of its level just in case because we we're going to be padding the uh, the nodes um just to like emphasize that it's a tree right otherwise we won't be able to see that it's a tree um though i'm thinking can we just <laughs> generate a json of some sort uh I mean, cool. Mm, I have a pretty cool library, by the way, for serializing JSON. Um, it's called uh, Jim, right? It's a media JSON serialization library, <laughs> right? And it allows you to do this kind of stuff, um, right? So we can relatively quickly dump that tree as JSON with this library, by the way. <laughs> Uh, this is actually quite funny. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in the description. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the description. So uh, description um, JSON serialization uh, library. Uh, right, it's gonna be something like this. Uh, my JSON serialization library. So I, I just want to see how easy it is to just like use this library in a particular project. I'm gonna take the the row, uh, the row thing in here, and I'm gonna just put it in here. Uh, so and I'm gonna reveal the reason why I want to use that. Uh, I'm gonna reveal the reason why I want to use that because it sounds kind of dumb, right? Uh, but there is a reason why I want to do that. Uh, so and it's a, a STB style uh, header only library. So you have to do something like Jim implementation, right? So something like this. And um, so print tree. And instead of the current level, you, you're gonna accept pointer to the gym, right? Uh, so how are we gonna be doing all of that? Um, I think we need to check if root is not equal to null, we're gonna do one thing, otherwise uh, we're gonna just do gym uh, null, right? If I remember correctly, gym.h, gym null, yeah, it's, it's just basically gym null. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna treat it as an object, right? It's gonna be gym begin object. I think it's object begin, right? It's object begin, you start the object and then you end the object. And within that object you have, uh, I think member, yeah, member key. Uh, so, and what you have, you have value, right? You have value. 
Um, so, and that value is going to be essentially string, but I think string has to be sized because we only have one character, right? So it's going to be Jim. Uh, I will take a pointer to the root. Uh, what is it called? It's called X, right? It is called X, and the size of this thing is one. Okay, so this is the first member. Uh, the second member is going to be left, and its value is going to be essentially print tree root uh, left uh, gym, right? And then you're going to have right, uh, and then right, and believe it or not, that is it. Yes, so you just turned. Uh, your node into a JSON. I'm not fucking joking. So now uh, let's actually remove all of this stuff. Uh, first, we're gonna generate the uh, the tree. Generate tree, uh, and we're gonna generate like three levels starting from zero. Right, three levels starting from zero. Uh, let's actually make sure that this entire thing compiles. It does not compile because we have a used variable. Uh, but to be fair. Yeah, control reaches. Yeah, yeah, okay, so this one is kind of important. Uh, I forgot to return the root. Yeah, thank you so much. There we go. Okay, at some point it actually uh, overflew. Hmm. Why would it do that? Oh, I know why. I know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, level curve is size t, and size t is unsigned, right? It's unsigned and you try to subtract something from unsigned variable it's under flu and became huge and that's that's how you hit this assert you see like getting into habit of, of putting asserts like everywhere if you make an assumption that cannot be checked at compile time put an assert in there put an assert don't even think about it like if you have if you just assume something just put a cert uh, it saved uh, my ass so many times you won't believe it. Uh, so and I like to keep my ass safe. Trust me, it is very important. Um, anyway, so we generated some shit. Um, now, to actually print the JSON, you do something like this. Uh, you need to define print function and sync. Uh, so let me see, let me see. So yeah, in our case, sync is going to be std out and the write function is going to be f right. That is it. So uh, after you generated the tree, you just do print tree, you provide the root and you provide the gym, and that will generate you the JSON in theory. Let's see if it will. Uh, uh, okay, so it doesn't work because I have to like explicitly cast it to gym write because it's slightly different function. Not that big of a deal. This has to be a pointer. And there you go. Uh, we just generated a JSON out of that, you know, tree. And look how easy it was. This is literally it. So we can just take any structure and just like write ser serializer for it. Uh, and the entire initialization is just this. And this library doesn't even allocate any memory. Right. So I really recommend to check it out. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, and the reason why I want to do that, because now I can pipe it in GQ and pretty print that shit. I got pretty printing for sh uh, for free. That's precisely why I did that. Uh, so it also has nulls in here, but nulls are like written uh, with colors or something like that. So you want to do something like this. How can I disable colors in GQ? Uh, okay, color, color output uh, by default GQ outputs colored. Uh, if writing to a terminal, you can force it to produce color even if writing to a pipe. Uh, disable color with minus M. Okay, so can I just put something like this? There we go. Now you can see the tree. Okay, you see? Uh, I can clearly see that this is a tree and I got pretty printed for free just by printing it as a JSON. Isn't that amazing? I think it's good and fucking amazing, mate. And now I can actually make it a little bit deeper. Yeah, so it's a little bit deeper now. So, and by the way, this tree generator actually uses a custom allocator. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> All right, so let's actually try to generate, uh, you know, a smaller tree. Let's say that we're going to have like three of them. Uh, all right. Um, so, and let's do a committee committee. Uh, two, 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 two. 
implement a simple uh, binary tree generator, uh, generator, right? Just to put something into the heap, right? Just to put something into the heap. And let's push that right into the repo. <laughs> so um, the next thing I want to do, by the way, uh, I want to iterate through all of the allocated chunks, right? I want to iterate through all of the allocated chunks and see if anything resembles the pointer that points into the heap, right? And how many of such pointers will we find? So let's quickly do that. Uh, so if I go into the heap.h, um, we have a locked chunks. So here's the chunk list. Uh, so let's do it like this. Uh, I'm going to print that and I'm going to also put it like this. There we go. So we're going to start iterating the alloc chunks. Uh, allocked, allocked, uh, I think it's size plus i. Uh, and within that chunk, we need to start uh, iterating the words, right? So first we're iterating the chunks and then we are iterating the words within the chunk. Uh, so it's going to be a locked chunks. Um, is it called just chunks? Yeah, chunks i. And within that chunks, you have a size. Oh, yeah, it's actually this one is a count, right? You have a certain count of chunks, and uh, then you iterate the size of the chunk, and the size should be in words, right? There we go. Now, uh, what are we doing? We are uh, doing a locked chunks i uh, start j, right? And it should be fine because we're pointing at, at the single word. Uh, and let's see, we need to check if that's if this pointer um, you int ptrt uh, p, right? Is it um, greater or equal than heap and uh, less than heap plus heap cap. There we go. See what I'm talking about? Uh, so uh, detected pointer, uh, detected heap pointer. So it's going to be P. Uh, I'm going to put it in here. Uh, also, I think it would be nice to actually count them somehow. Uh, heap uh, PTR's count is going to be zero, right? And every time we find a heap pointer, we're going to be incrementing it. Uh, and then we're going to put something like uh, detected, detected ZU pointers, heap pointers, right? And it's going to be something like this. Uh, to heap PTRS count. Um, all right, so let's try to run this program, right? So we're just generating the tree. Uh, we're also going to print it just to see that it's a correct tree. We're going to be iterating through all of the allocated chunks. Within the, all of the allocated chunks, we're iterating all of the words. And we look at the word and see, is that a pointer that points to something within the heap? And if so, we're going to say that, okay, we detected something that looks like a pointer, right? And then we're going to also print how many of them we detected. So uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. So, and a locked chunks. Um, uh, could not convert long side int to... Ah... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. It has to be actually plus J, I think. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. So we have to be super careful. Right, so this thing contains the pointer. Yeah, 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 so you int PTR contains the pointer that we want to check. So that means I have to uh, like turn it into that. Uh, right, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, statically typed uh, compiled language. I really appreciate that. Um, so comparison of distinct pointers types lack a cast. <sighs> well, it is true, by the way, because this operation will end up being something different. Um, 
you know what we know that they're like aligned like this so shouldn't be that big of a problem uh and by the way capacity this is a capacity in bytes this is a capacity in bytes this is very dangerous to do it like that so uh let me quickly actually change that so it is in bytes and i never actually divided oh my god yes all right uh so heap cap uh words uh is gonna be essentially this thing divided by size of uh uint ptrt uh right and we also want to make sure that this thing is even divisible we can put it in here in the place where it's important and the heap is going to be basically uh in words in words <laughs> not really in words but in words uh and this one is going to be in words so yeah okay naming is super important so in here we're going to actually convert it to void star uh there we go heap cap uh words All right so heap cap words okay we compiled successfully didn't we nice -o, nice -o, nice -o. if i try to run this entire thing uh how can i run it uh, i think it's something like heap okay we detected six pointers isn't that fucking amazing so how many levels do we have in here actually how many levels do we have? Uh, so I need to estimate uh, three levels, right? Uh, that means uh -huh. you have something like this and then something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Detected six pointers. That point, it, they not only look like pointers, but they point to something within the heap itself. And we detected uh, precisely uh, six of them. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty fucking cool. So we, did, we didn't detect the uh, seventh one. And the problem is that the seventh one is located here, right? So we can never actually detect that one um, unless we start scanning the uh, the stack, right? Unless we start scanning the stack. And the question is, how can we start scanning the stack? Uh, I think we're gonna find out uh, after a small break. Before I go onto the break, I wanna commit everything I have in here. Uh, so, two, 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 two. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Scan uh, the allocated chunks uh, for, um, for heap pointers, right? For heap pointers. And let's push that right into the repo. So, of course, yet again, this has a lot of limitations. Uh, I think we should actually start uh, listing out the limitations, right? So, uh, to, 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 to something like this limitations. What kind of limitations do we have? Um, um, the pointers, uh, the pointers to the heap. Uh, can only be located uh, in the heap, uh, in the heap, and the stack. You cannot put them in a static memory unless we add support for uh, using static memory as the um, uh, the roots of the garbage collection, right? So another thing uh, is that um, <clears throat> only uh, only no Packed structs, right? So all of the pointers should be uh, aligned. Um, mm, no uh, tricks that uh, obscure the pointers, like Zor uh, linked lists. Uh, linked lists. So these are limitations. Right. Do we have any other limitations in here? Um, I don't think so. Uh, so I'm going to just put it like this. Uh, add limitations section to the readme. All right, I'm going to push that right into the repo. All right, so let's make a small break. And after the break, we're going to try to see how can we scan the stack. 
All right, so if I remember correctly, uh, GCC had a special uh, special thing for getting the stack, uh, print stack pointer or something. Uh, yeah, print out the value of stack pointer. So there's a stack overflow in here. I'm actually gonna uh, give the link to this thing in the description. Uh, all right, um, print out value of stack pointer. That's gonna be stack pointer. Uh, value of a stack pointer. So people just suggesting to take a pointer on the stack, uh, but uh, as far as I know, GCC just straight up has a way to get the frame address or something. Uh, so yeah. Mm -mm. So I'm gonna also put this thing in the in the description. So you also can have a return address uh, where the uh, the thing will return. By the way. Ah, shit, it's not gonna work. Yeah, I just, I just thought uh, that, um, you know, the main is an entry point, right? So that means it has no place to return. It, it's not an entry point. The entry point is underscore star. So if you take a look at the uh, return address of main, you it will point to the underscore start. So uh, there's no point in even doing that. Um, all right, so we have a frame address and a level. Now, what is the level? This function is similar to built-in return address, but it returns the address of the function frame rather than the return address of the function. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Colon built-in frame address uh, with a value of zero yields the frame address of the current function, and value of one yields the frame address of the corner of the current function, and so on and so forth. Holy shit, that's exactly what I wanted. You can program in fourth. Did you know that fourth is a programming language? Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. So the frame is an area on the stack that holds the local variables and saved registers and stuff like that. Okay, um, but where is the beginning of the stack? I need to scan starting at, from the beginning of the stack. On top of that, it would be nice to know how many frames you have. Right, it would be kind of nice to know. It would be kind of nice to know. But maybe you can know that yeah wait a second isn't return address also located on the stack maybe but it may not work okay whatever one of the things we need to check we need to check if the built-in frame address is actually aligned i think it's quite important I think it's quite important. Let's actually go uh, here and see if we can uh, do something about it. Int main, int main, return zero, return zero. So it's gonna be zero and void p. There we go. Print f, uh, something like this is gonna be p. Uh, and let's just do this thing like that. It's gonna be make minus p. And uh, here is an address, right? And I suppose it is different every time, right? Because the stack is probably located in different places. And here's the question. Uh, is this uh, divisible by size of the point? Huh? Is that a thing? Uh, see you. Looks like it, actually. Very, very interesting. You know what I'm thinking? We can have some sort of initialization, right? Essentially, uh, you grab, uh, I'm not sure if it will work because stack actually grows towards the, um, um, towards the zero, right? So here you have zero, stack starts here. So it's going to be like a stack uh, start, right? Start. Uh, right. And every time you append something, it actually appends like here, right? It appends here. Um, so if you start at a particular place, right? If you start at a particular place, um, you're going to be moving you got to be moving like from here towards the stack start. Aha. Uh -huh. So this thing 
could be the heap collect. Right. So essentially, uh, the uh, deallocation is going to happen in, in heap collect. Right. And in heap collect, um, this is from where I have to start like um, iterating. Right. This is from where I have to start iterating. And I need to iterate up until the beginning. But the beginning can be initialized uh, in main, I think. Yeah. So uh, let me let me do something like this. Uh, heap dot h. We need some sort of a global variable that um, that holds the beginning of the stack. Right. That holds whatever we consider the beginning of the stack. It may not be the real beginning of the stack, but whatever we consider uh, the, the thing. So um, let's put it like this. Is going to be. And another thing, I'm going to try to assume that stack is also aligned, um, you know, according to the words. Uh, so let's call it stack base, right? So this is going to be stack base, and this is going to be an external thing in here, uh, right? And I'm going to just do uh, something like this. I put stack based under the heap, so it should be fine in here. Initially, it's going to be zero. This is totally fine. Uh, but then I'm going to um do the following thing stack uh base and i also want to cast this entire thing to you int ptr underscore t uh like that uh to be fair um i think i need to explicitly say that i have no plans to modify the stack you see what i'm talking about i have zero plans to modify it right i'm gonna be only looking into it uh so let's actually do something like constant here uh right and then i'm gonna do const there we go stack base so and now uh heap collect knows uh about all of that stuff so let's actually move this entire thing in here so here is the stack base mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, let, me, let me try the following stuff. Um, I'm going to put a new line here because I remember it didn't print the new line. Uh, let's remove this entire stuff. Uh, and uh, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to be just calling heap collect, right? So let's just uh, call heap collect. Uh, there we go. And within the heap collect, uh, this is the start, right? This is the start. Um, uh, stack base, okay. This is the start. Uh, and it's going to be uint uh, pointer, uh, pointer const, right? And we're going to be actually casting this entire thing uh, to that uh, pointer as well. Uh, so what I'm thinking is that I'm going to be just iterating uh, while start is less than uh, maybe also equal. I'm not sure if it makes sense to make it equal. Uh, but yeah, let's actually make it less than stack base. Right. Um, I'm going to be trying to do the following thing. Mm -hmm. Void pointer p start dereference this thing um, right and instantly convert it to void star if p is greater or equal to the heap uh, might as well actually uh, call this u int ptr underscore t and p is less than heap plus heap capacity in words uh, we're going to say that we detected a pointer. Uh, detected uh, heap pointer on this stack. And we're going to print this thing in here. Right, so... Um, yep, that's probably how we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Detected heap pointer on this stack. All right. Mm -hmm. And after that also, we probably need to do something like um, might as well just do something like this, uh, stack uh, start plus one, right. <sighs> I need to read what exactly uh, returns of the function frame. So it's probably where the function frame starts, right? Um, 
function frame is an area in the stack that holds local variables and saved register. The frame address is normally address of the first word pushed on the stack by the function. However, the exact definition depends upon the processor and colon convention. Yeah, this one is a little bit finicky. So I'm not sure how exactly. It is. So does it have to be less or less or equal? Um, so this one is a little bit hard. Um, so and it also like greatly depends on the architecture. Um, okay, so. It detected a single heap pointer on the stack. Look, it iterated uh, through the stack uh, by eight bytes. And it found a sequence of bytes that falls into this range. How high of a probability that would be? That's actually a pretty low probability of that to happen. So I think I think it worked out, so we can even try to, uh, you know, confirm that. We can try to print the location of the root, right? Let's try to print the location of the root. Uh, root is going to be uh, p, right? So, and let's just put it in here, and also we need to convert it to uh, to that. Uh, and, uh, okay, so here is the root, and we found it on the stack. We fucking found it on the stack. Holy shit, yes, uh, this works, but I'm not 100% sure uh, about this. So is, is this condition necessary, but, uh, and can we rely on stack being aligned properly? I have no idea, but yeah. So that's one of the things we can do now. Um, essentially, we can just iterate through the stack, right? Find something that falls into the, um, into the heap, right? Uh, also find if it falls into something that is allocated and mark those things as, uh, you know, as reachable. And we have to repeat that process for the, um, for the heap things as well, right? We have to repeat that for the heap things as well. And after that, after we like uh, seen that everything is reachable or unreachable, uh, we can go through all the unreachable parts and just, uh, you know, deallocate them. Mm. To be fair, yeah, we have to do that recursively, right? So at the root, we iterate the stack, we mark all of the, uh, you know, reachable chunks, and we repeat that algorithm recursively, recursively on the, uh, on the reached chunks. Yeah, we have to repeat that recursively on the reached chunks. So this is going to be like a very much recursive algorithm uh all right and by the way the stack could be also treated as a chunk of some sort if you know what i'm talking about all right because um, okay so it could be some sort of like an uh, internal function uh mark uh region which accepts uh you int ptr start right and you int uh ptr end right uh, and implement it and essentially in here what you would do is um, mark region start and stack base right just to check the stack and then for the uh, then you would uh, determine the uh, unreachable reachable chunk right you will get this chunk and then you can try to mark another region chunk start chunk uh, start uh, start uh, chunk start plus size yeah, yeah chunk start plus size something like this so and th uh, that way you'll be able to reuse the same process for marking um you know for, for finding the pointers um if you know what i mean yeah you'll be able to use the same process it's pretty cool it's pretty cool i like that <laughs> all right so uh let's make a let's make a small break um, all right, so uh, let's allocate something that will keep track of um, of the reached chunks, of the reachable chunks, rather, right? So maybe we're going to have some sort of an array of booleans, uh, reachable, right, something like reachable chunks. Mm. And the capacity of this array is going to be basically the capacity of the of the chunks. So I think it's going to be um, chunk 
uh, list capacity, right? Um, and initially it's going to be uh, initialized with zero. Initially initialized, uh, right? Um, so, and I'm just thinking how we're going to approach all of that, right? So, uh, when I do heap collect, uh, right? What I'm doing is essentially. Mm, I'm just thinking, what's going to be the um, the recursive scheme? What's going to be the recursive scheme? I think the recursive scheme is going to just start from heap collect. All right, and uh, let's actually go and t obtain the stack pointer on whatnot for, for the current thingy. Uh, where is the stack pointer? Okay, so this is the stack base, uh, and here we're going to have a stack start. Uh, uint ptr uh -huh. stack uh, start. All right, so this is going to be stack start. Uh, and then we're going to do mark. Uh, region stack start mm. uh, stack start uh, and then stack base mm. and if we're gonna include the last value maybe we actually have to do something like plus one right because end uh, is something that you shouldn't try to reach right uh, also after uh, before we can try to do that i need to uh, clean up this array so let's do something like mem set uh, this to zero size of uh, this thing there we go so we're gonna clean all of the um all of the reachable chunks right all of the reachable chunks um and then start this entire stuff okay so let me see uh what we're gonna be doing um, so this one has to be like const. So this is a const and also this is a const. Uh, while start is less than end, uh, start plus equal one, um, what we're doing is um, we're taking the pointer, um, const u int ptr uh, t. Uh, yeah, it's going to be like that. Uh, it's a start and we are reinterpreting, reinterpreting it like so. Right, we're reinterpreting it like so. And if this thing falls within any of the chunks, uh, any of the chunks, we will do the recursive thingy. Right, we'll do the recursive thingy. Mm. So I'm just thinking how we're going to be iterating all of that. I think I'm going to actually iterate all of the chunks. It's going to be slow, right? But uh, I think like we're not trying to go for the very fast implementation. We're trying to go for a working implementation, right? So it's going to be a locked chunks uh, count plus plus i. Um, and within that chunk, right, what we're looking for. So I think I'm going to actually obtain this chunk. Uh, a locked chunks. Um, chunks i right mm -mm. Mm -hmm. i want to check if p is greater or equal than chunk start and uh, it is less than chunk start plus chunk size there we go if we identified such pointer and uh, this thing uh, this particular thing uh, is unreachable, right? This particular thing is unreachable. It becomes reachable. It becomes reachable. And we're doing this mark thing recursively. So the start is going to be chunk start, uh, chunk start. And the... Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. yeah okay yeah, yeah. and uh the end is gonna be chunk uh start plus chunk size there we go so this is how we're gonna do that recursively um all right and that way we recursively um will basically mark everything if i understand correctly mm. that is it that is the whole algorithm as far as i can tell right so yeah, 
Hopefully it's gonna work. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, okay, let me try to recompile this entire stuff. It doesn't even compile because we don't have a boolean. So let's actually uh, put a boolean in here and then mem set. I think that means you need to do something like string and then stack stack stack. <laughs> Well, I mean, stack and start look kind of similar, okay? They, they look kind of similar, don't judge me. <laughs> uh, all right, so in here we're gonna have to do um, remove all of the unreachable chunks, right? Remove all of the unreachable chunks. So in that case, we'll have to iterate through all of the chunks and see if it's they're unreachable. Um, maybe also append them to a separate array and just deallocate them in in sequence yeah, yeah, yeah just deallocate all of them in sequence so that will be rather uh, rather cool um okay so now i need to go to main in here so we print a tree uh we do heap collect and i'm just a little bit scared um how should we try all of that? How should we try all of that? I think what we need to do in here, let's actually try to iterate through all of the chunks and print them um, and also mark which are reachable and which ones are unreachable. Okay, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. So uh, I'm going to be iterating the locked chunks, uh, something like count is going to be plus plus i. And um, so we're going to be printing it like that. So it's going to be start pointer size zu uh, and also boolean like reachable right reachable um let's put d in here um could also try to put like a string why not it also could be a string so uh and in here i might as well do something like chunk chunk uh a locked chunks chunks too many chunks <laughs> chunk start right so then uh chunk size and uh reachable chunks i there we go that's how we're gonna print all of that all right and if i try to run this entire thing it does not compile because this thing wants to be void uh void star right so there you go here's the void star anything else well yeah so that means if this thing is reachable this is true otherwise it is in fact false there we go and all of them are reachable all of the chunks are reachable and look at that remember how uh, at the beginning i said that the size of the node is going to be three because you have one character then two pointers uh, two pointers fall into the word and one character also has a dedicated word so the size of the chunk is three and all of them were detected as reachable here's an interesting thing let's try to allocate some garbage in the uh in the heap and see if it's reachable or not. Uh, so yeah, uh, for uh, size ti less than 10, right? There we go. And uh, let's do something like heap uh, alloc uh, i, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, would you look at that? <laughs> so we have some unreachable garbage and then reachable, reachable seven chunks which is rather interesting. Why we have seven of them? Mm. Because, oh, wait, 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 wait. A tree? Yeah, tree actually has seven of them. It's because this is the amount of nodes. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, they are, yeah, they're reachable. They're straight up reachable. Here is another cool trick. Okay, so I'm not gonna allocate any garbage now, right? So all of these things are reachable. All of these things are reachable. Now, I set root to null. I'm literally leaking the memory and I do heap collect. They're unreachable anymore. Look, look, look. Hol holy fucking, this is so cool. This is so cool. I implemented a garbage collector. Fuck. Holy shit. All right, so <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, I mean, I, I also need to implement deallocation and stuff like that, but yeah, we can detect that these chunks are unreachable. Uh, and again, if you put some garbage in here, right? So uh, yeah, so you had an unreachable garbage before and now all of these things are unreachable, all of them. Um, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> 
Uh, I really like that. That's actually super cool. Nice. Um, okay. How are we gonna be deallocating all of them? I I don't know. Can we deallocate all of them like at once? Um, mm, I suppose. One of the things we can do, like I can just call free on them, uh, something like heap free. Um, but heap free by itself is also like it removes the chunk, right? It removes the chunk and then deallocates the chunk. So when you remove the chunk from the allocated chunks, you invalidate the indices as you iterate things. So this one has to be a little bit more like, yeah, it has to be a little bit more involved. Also, when do we uh, merge the chunks? I think we merge them when we allocate things. Okay, okay, so we merge them when we allocate the things. This is actually fine. This is actually fine. Um, all right, so... Mm -mm -mm. What I'm thinking is that maybe uh, we can first uh, iterate through all of the allocated chunks and which are unreachable go into the list of free chunks, right? Mm. And then we want to remove them um, starting from the, from the end or something like that. Or the easiest way to go about this kind of stuff would be actually append them to like intermediate list or something. Uh, right, something like void PTR um, to, to free, right. And how many of them do we want to have in there? Uh, basically chunk list cap, right, chunk list cap. It's going to be initially zero. And then we're going to have something like to free count, which is initially zero. Uh, and yeah, all of that is really inefficient, right? But uh, this is not the point. Uh, the point is to actually try to implement garbage collection algorithm, uh, right? Because I never done that before. Um, okay, so we're iterating through all of that. Uh, did I? Okay. Uh, we're iterating through all of this. If a chunk is unreachable, if chunk is unreachable, chunk is unreachable we are appending shit to to free so i might as well just do something to free count to free count uh zero right and uh assert that to free count is less uh than chunk list capacity chunk list capacity uh to free to free count uh to free count plus Plus, and what we put in there, we put uh, a locked chunks, chunks, I start. There we go. So we're collecting all of the pointers that we need to deallocate. Uh, after that, I'm iterating through all of the pointers that I want to allocate. Deallocate to free count, uh, to free count plus plus I. And uh, what I do here is heap free uh, to free there we go and then i free all of them cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay this one is interesting uh, bo -bo -bo -bo. Huh. so i think i have to be a little bit more careful right so this thing deallocated everything instantly but i'm not sure how because this thing should not be deallocated so unrich what why did it do it like that this is really weird anyway so um let's keep stuff like that so we're printing a tree but we're not going to be collecting anything oh yeah because we don't print anything anymore um all right so what we're going to print in here what we're going to print um we had a function to dump the chunks, right? So we had a function to dump the chunks, and I think I want to have some sort of a, like a uh, name for the chunks, right? So they're going to have a name. Uh, we're going to put that name in here, right? Um, all right. So uh, um, we need a function dump list uh, a locked uh, a locked chunks. Mm -hmm. A locked uh, freed. All right. Uh, does not really compile properly because why? Too many arguments. 
Uh, this is because I also need to update the header for the heap. Uh, all right, so this is going to be something like dump. All right, there we go. And uh, do we have anything else? It's going to be S, uh, but that means we have to put this entire stuff in here. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, after we um, allocated everything, uh, we have a locked chunks and I fucked up because I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, so freed. All right, so this is how, this is basically the state of the heap. This is how many allocated chunks we have and this is how many free chunks we have. We just basically have a single huge chunk. Um, so do we need to print the reachability? Maybe not, maybe it doesn't matter. Right, so now the next thing I do, I set root, actually, yeah i can try to just do heap collect right i can just try to do heap collect uh right and this is cool so the garbage that we allocated before right so the garbage that we allocated before got collected but the tree did not so this is basically the trees so and all of that is free chunks some of the uh, some of them consequent uh but that is totally fine so they're going to be squashed into a single chunk on the next allocation so you don't have to even worry about that essentially if i just do um you know keep a lock one byte right uh, as you can see it all got squashed into like a single thing right so you don't even have to worry about that right but uh for now they're going to be left like that all right so now um so there's extra shit in here that is not needed. Uh, now I'm going to try to set the root to the null and then collect everything and then print everything. And uh, yeah, so here is before setting root to null. Here is after setting root to null. That's pretty cool. Mm, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So yeah. Assuming that our stack iteration implementation is correct, we have a simple garbage collector that requires manual call to heap collect. Uh, yeah. We can actually um, simplify some of the things. We can try to heap collect when you try to allocate, right? Essentially, we're going to keep all, uh, like allocating uh, things on top of the heap until we run out of memory. And only when we run out of memory, we can try to deallocate unreachable parts, right? Deallocate unreachable parts and uh, also squash all of these things. But that could be too much, right? That could be too much. So, um, yeah. Another thing, uh, another interesting thing could be like actually run it in a separate thread and just call uh, heap collect periodically. Um, but that will require like, you know, building some sort of like sophisticated synchronization system and stuff like that. Uh, and I don't think I'm gonna learn too much in terms of like garbage collecting, uh, you know, ideology and stuff like that. So it's more of a like a, you know, technical interesting thing. Um, so yeah, I guess I did it. Right, so well, let me do, uh, let me commit everything and just push everything to the, uh, to, to the repo. Mm, 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 mm. So I think we implemented everything. So we don't have a single unimplemented, right? So everything, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so what are the limitations we have to have? Um, probably works only on x86-64 uh probably works only when compiled with gcc <laughs> uh so yeah that's basically the limitations of this garbage collect uh all right that's basically the limitations um all right mm -hmm. so uh implement um heap uh, collect Right, I'm going to push that right into the repo. Uh, okay, go. So, yeah. Uh, I guess that's it for the day. Thanks, everyone, who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. And I see you on the, um, on the next coding session. I see you in the next question. Love you all. Mwah.